This week, we're accelerating evangelism by talking about the primary mission of the church, making disciples, growing people spiritually to be like Jesus and resources that can help us. I'll be talking with Pastor Cindy Cabral. Cindy is the pastor of Lively Stones Christian Center in Brockton uh, and a good friend. Uh, I'm Charles Galda and your host for The Church in Action. Pastor Cindy, thanks for being with us again. Thank you for the invitation, Charles. And so for folks who maybe didn't hear last time you were on, can you give us a little bit of a bio, a background on you, how you became pastor at Lively Stones, and then what is what is Lively Stones and maybe a little bit about a sketch about that? Um, well, my pastor one day was in the pulpit and he said, today is the day for promotion. So he promoted me to minister. Um, I'd always wanted to be a reverend because I thought as a reverend, I would be able to get into some of the shelters to work with some of the women, uh, young girls with babies and did it. So that's the only reason why I wanted a title because the title was relevant at that time. Um, and he, um, I, so I was a minister for maybe, mm, maybe five years or so, and then uh, promoted to reverend. I was reverend for a year, and then my pastor, uh, the founder of the church, passed away. And when he passed away, he had left um, instructions for his wife to, he wanted me to take over. And so I thought I was being interim pastor for the for the year as we were looking for someone else, but we never was looking. So I ended up being, <laughs> I ended up being the pastor of uh, Lively Stones and then COVID hit. We had just uh, moved into a new place. COVID hit and um, we had to figure out the Zoom thing and all of that. And so that's that's really how I became uh, pastor of Lively Stones. Yeah. Right in the middle of, of uh, COVID. Right in the middle right. of COVID. And, and I will say that in the middle of COVID, God always know what we need and when we need it. So he sent you and the BMA 10 point to rescue this person, this me, who did not know anything about pastoring. I mean, nothing, you know, because you can watch something until you do it. And once you do it, it's a whole, but you guys, uh, I just want to say now you guys poured into me and I really do appreciate that. So, Well, thanks. And we'd say the same thing. God sent you into our lives and ble you've blessed <laughs> us the same way. And and so you've, you've been on a journey and I've been really interested and exciting and following that journey um, because you're really stepping into spiritual formation in, in ways that um, step away from how we do church okay. and, and really get into how do we grow people spiritually. And so tell me a little bit, if you would, about um, how you're thinking about that and, and what you're doing. So I think... I was introduced to spiritual uh, formation through uh, Gordon Conwell and um, never understood really what it was. I, I, I really didn't know what it was. And, um, and so now within the church, you know, when you do the spiritual disciplines, you begin to see some things um, to be able to call it some names that you didn't know. So to me, the spiritual disciplines flow into the spiritual formation me i think it's all intertwined i think that's a significant piece and it's something i've been focused on too because people will think about well of course you do the spiritual disciplines you pray and you read your bible but the spiritual disciplines are is it's way more robust than that and i think jesus is really clear what i've realized in the sermon Mount is but you've got to do the right you got to do them the right way and the right mm -hmm. and for the right mm -hmm. reason right he keeps saying you know so pray like this give like this so it's not yes. enough to do yes. them you have to have the right motivation and then do them the right, right. way, and, and and you so, know, and follow follow the plan that Jesus uh, mapped out for them. Actually, I mean, how so, He said to do them. Yeah, say say more about that. What do you mean? I mean, um, it's like, uh, what was the one I was um, when I was thinking about the Sabbath? You know, um, it, it is a spiritual discipline. I was thinking about Sabbath, but I'm thinking Sabbath. Oh, that's talking about Sunday and doing the Bible thing and praying and reading your word and stepping away and having time with God. But no, it goes a lot deeper than that. You know, it, it's about taking time for yourself. It's about taking time with your family. It's about um, rejuvenating, uh, however rejuvenation is for you. So uh, it went deeper than I thought. Yeah. Yep. And and so Sabbath and rest are, are really good ones to to park on for a minute because we're we're uh, across the church. We're pretty bad at them. 
and and I had a pastor yeah, say, yeah, right. I had a pastor say to me, um, if I said to my elders, I'm not good at monogamy, I'd probably get fired. <laughs> but if I say to them, I'm not good at rest, everybody just goes, me neither. And we just move on. Okay. Yeah, right. And, yeah, and, and, you do. You do. Right. And Jesus is really saying, so, you know, all of scripture is talking about rest differently, but Jesus is saying something differently. And we don't seem to take it very seriously. Nope. No, we and, don't. I mean, because he, he's he stepped away from the crowds and rested. Yep. And, he and took so, his disciples away from the crowd. And they, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And and so so what what is what is changing in your practice of rest? So what is changing is I'm trying to find the time to do it. I'm actually rearranging uh, my schedule to actually. Uh, I, I have a saying that's saying no is a love word. I tell people that all the time, mm. but sometimes I don't practice that. And so now I'm learning to say no and not feel guilty about saying no, mm. because there's always somebody else that's been gifted to do what I'm keep saying yes to. And so even with the, even with um, our church is, well, no, we're not going to do that. You all are stretched too thin because my church is a smaller church. And I had to realize we can't do everything. We have to um, use people that we don't burn them out. And so yeah. that's that's some of the things we're doing. Yep. Yeah, and and you know it's so important. I've I've been uh, exploring because I, I I don't know how to rest. Right, it's not just not in my um, nature. I know you my don't, wiring. Charles. We know uh, you don't. So you don't know how to rest. Yeah. <laughs> no. And, and so, you know, it was not, it was not really modeled for me because my family's not good at rest and we're, and we're task oriented. We're good at doing stuff. And so I've really struggled with what does it actually look like to rest both physically mm -hmm. and mentally? Cause, cause I, yes. I can force myself into physical rest, but my mind keeps going and, and working on things. And so I've, I've re I, there's a book I read, Steve Machia's, uh, uh, runs an, uh, or an organization called Leadership Transformations, and they have an abide cohort, and I've been mm -hmm. doing that. We've spent time on rest. And there's a book we had to read, I think it was called Sabbath. I forget the name of uh, the rabbi who wrote it, but he's writing it from the Jewish perspective of what rest is. Right. And I really, uh, and we, I'm, I'm, I've committed to trying this. It's, it's, there's this idea of now you've got to prepare for the Sabbath. And so you're cooking meals ahead of time. And then that first meal, at the, the dinner as the Sabbath starts, is a really important meal. You do it on the good china in the dining room if you have it. That's right. Right. And mm -hmm. right. It's a celebration. And now we just sit and talk afterwards. And then the mm -hmm. next day is about worship and spending time with family and friends. Um, and, yeah. do, and, and as Steve said, and doing things that don't require adrenaline. Right. I thought that was a helpful right. way to think about it. Yeah. For, um, yeah. Yeah. And the, right. And the other, the other thing's been helpful for me is that he he shared the beauty stops our mind. And so when you look at a really nice landscape, your mind stops working at things and you just get engaged mm -hmm. in the beauty. And, I, and I, I've been noticing it happens with music too. And so I'm oh, trying yeah. to Most now make rest and Sabbath something. But I, I love what you said is we shouldn't feel guilty about it. We're called to do it. We should feel right. guilty when we're not doing mm -hmm. it. That's right. And, That's and right. Have, and have I, you know, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. Go ahead. I just I just found with the resting that it gives me um, my brain works better. I, I'm nicer. You know, even though you're a pastor, I'm nicer to people. <laughs> mm. I'm not cutting them off. And what I realized is that I was overtired, over, um, mm. yeah, I was just overtired, overtired. So, well, and, and I started thinking just for my own uh, issues is we, we look at Israel in the old Testament and they're not practicing the Sabbath all the time. And what's the issue? They don't trust the goodness of God. They don't trust if I don't get the crops in, right? I'm going to be hungry this this year. If I don't get this them sowed, we're not going to have a, a harvest. And 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 so, how much of my issue is really I don't trust the goodness of God that if I don't do this now today, right, it's going to be a problem, and God can't take care of of the ministry work I have to do, regardless of whether I do this on Sunday. 
And I'm not going to sit here and try to psychoanalyze or anything like that, but I don't think really, I, because I, I think you trust God. I, I think for you, you're just a, 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 a somewhat like me, a task oriented person and it needs to get done. Mm. And if it's not getting done, then you worry about it, you know, and it, and if you are not doing it, then who's doing it? So then now you got the other piece too, because you, now you have, because now you have to begin to trust those that you've hired to work with you to do what you've hired them to do. Yeah. And, and when I sit down and try and rest, my mind naturally goes to, gee, I've got to get, I was working on the annual report. And so I'm building yeah. it in my mind. And I'm like, okay, I'm working. Then I tried doing mm-hmm. stuff that will occupy my mind. And then I realized this is just work I don't get paid to do. Right. So, so, so I'm not, I'm still not resting. Yeah. Yeah. You're still working. You all, you're always working. Yeah. Yeah. And so folks have told me, you know, you need to find a hobby. I'm like, well, I'm not interested in anything. So I like like to analyze things and organize things, do things. And, and so, so on days, tell me about a day where you said, Hey, I really think I got it right. I really did rest. And what did you experience either that day or as you went through the week that was different? Well, I'll say this. Yesterday was my birthday. Happy birthday. And what I realized that on my birthday, I used to, you know, still be, I I would still work. I would still do church work. I would still do a whole lot of other things. Mm -hmm. But I found that um, I am now, I just, I rest. I do what it is that I want to do. I don't care if it's watching tennis or uh, taking a walk or shop. and, and, And I find I wake up the next day in a good mood. I feel really good. I I have rested. You know, I read some word. I, I listen to my music. You know, it's all those little things. And it's my own agenda. Yeah. It's so so I hear I feel refreshed. Is that fair? Yeah. So so it's almost like God knows what he's talking about. Oh, he always knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Not almost. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so now you've been trying to work with your leadership on these things, too. In addition to the church, you've been pouring into mm-hmm. them. And so what have you been doing with your leaders around spiritual formation? So uh, one of the things I've been working with them on is um, because we, we did um, we did the spiritual disciplines as part of uh, our Bible study for a good six months. Mm-hmm. Um, and it worked out well. And so the hardest thing I'm getting them to do is to do Sabbath, you know, and Sabbath means spending time with your family and not doing church work. Uh, And so that's beginning to filter in and they're beginning to do things, you know, um, uh, one of, one of the ministers with his wife, you know, taking time and spending time with her and not spending time doing all the stuff for the church, but spending time with his family. And, and so with another minister, uh, she's taking time, I mean, just shutting down. And I told her I will not call her. I will not text her or anything except for it have to be an extreme emergency. So give me whatever your Sabbath day. I, I got stuck on the Sabbath part of it because I know that Jesus rested. God rested. And so if 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 they are resting, it's got to be something to that in reference to doing good ministry. Yep. And if you have uh, uh, what is the saying? You, you know, happy wife, happy life. So, you know, I'm trying to you know, incorporate some of those things. And, and so some of that is really beginning to work. And then the other thing is that when we were doing the um, the self-disciplines, um, even though we were doing some of them, we didn't know what to call them. And so the mm-hmm. book uh, helped us to, to know what self-discipline was. And so with the self-disciplines, um, they're beginning to work on some on their own personal kind of things. Mm-hmm. And so I'm beginning to see growth that way. So and and the book you're talking about is uh, the the spiritual oh, discipline sorry, yeah. handbook um, by Adele yes. Calhoun, which is a great resource and yes. really useful for folks. It was really oh, and thank you so much for giving it to me. Oh. Life changing. Glad I'm I serious. Yeah, glad I could be a small part of it. Thank you. And yeah. and and yeah. so now so so you're working with them on rest. Is is there? Any other intentional stuff you guys have done together, whether it's you know silence and solitude or um, uh, memorization? Well, we do, okay, so things. with the um, <laughs> uh, with the silence part. So what I've incorporated uh, with our churches 
every Sunday morning, I don't care who's in the sanctuary, we come together and we make a circle and we connect and mm -hmm. we pray. Um, and in the connection of the prayer, it's a time for us to sort of get rid of the angst of whatever happened that morning and, and to actually have a few moments of silence mm -hmm. uh, before um, we actually go into the prayer and before we start our Sunday morning, um, you know, prayer and welcoming people in. Um, the other thing is, is that um, during uh, communion, I don't think that we were giving people enough time to be silent in that moment, to, to really recognize why they're doing what they're doing. You know, we tell them, well, you know, you need to, you know, make peace if you got this and that and that, but you don't give them a chance to do that. And so mm -hmm. we've also incorporated that doing uh, communion where they take a moment to allow people to be silent in their own mind and to understand mm -hmm. why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. You know, I think it's a great practice. I, I was reading somebody was talking about that we need to do that after the sermon, too, because we want people to contemplate what they just heard. But for most of us, it's now yes. the sermon's over. Now there's a hymn. Now there's a benediction. Now there's go get the kids out of the nursery. Now there's drive home. Now there's lunch. Now there's a, and by the time I find the time, will. The I, will. I, right, I've forgotten that I have anything to think about. And if I remember that, I don't know what to think about. <laughs> and so just creating some space right, exactly. to just exactly. contemplate. What I just heard and what is, mm -hmm. what is that saying to me in it mm -hmm. is really um, something that's missing in a lot of our practices. And and so. And um, that, that contemplation is one of your spiritual disciplines too. So, yep. yep. And so do you find the worship service th that you encounter God differently in the worship experience because of this, this, this periods of silence? I, I do, because I, I think it really gives um, the person the opportunity to really go into a one-on-one -on -one with God, even though you're connected with another group, mm. you know, um, even though you're connected with somebody on, on your right or your left, uh, you can still be connected to them, be in the moment, but also be in a moment with just you and God. And um um, I think uh, when we when we come out, even with the younger, even with the uh, our young people, when we come out of it, the atmosphere has changed. Yeah, it, it's just even though we're still going about doing what we're doing, we're going about doing it in more a more of a praise worthy kind of yes, God, I'm glad you're here kind of thing instead of. I'm ticking off my boxes because this is what I'm supposed to do on Sunday morning. Mm. And and you said something that makes you sense. you alluded to something uh, that I don't want to pass up because you talked about how through the practice of rest you're actually being more patient with people because you're saying I'm not I'm not cutting people off and stuff like that. Um, and so that's fascinating that that rest is is God is using the practice of rest to make you more patient, which I wouldn't have made that connection. Yes. Yes. Yes, he is. Hmm. Because, you know, you're overtired. Your mind is your mind is always on the next thing that you got to do. Did I finish this? Did I finish that? Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, as a pastor, people are always coming to you with things and, and or, or with with their issues or or even just to say good morning. Sometimes it's like mm -hmm. and you're always in work mode, yeah. always in work mode. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it gives you patience. Now, now you're also doing some work with the ministry. You're, you're doing a lot of work with a lot of different groups because I know you're on the board of the Black Ministerial Alliance, Ten Point in Boston. You're uh, by the time this airs, you'll be on our board. Um, you're going. To, you're taking courses at Gordon Conwell. Uh, you're um, you're also doing some work with a ministry called 3DM. Yeah. Or are you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, we just finished. We we finished. Uh, we finished that one, um, and they did what they called um, a huddle for pastors uh, coming together and trying to help us to see our relationship and how we're lining up to God and what it is that He wants us to do. Um, and so I did. I I I, all, I well, I sort of completed my huddle, um, but it was good. It was a it was a good chance to be to see what others are actually 
what other pastors are actually doing and what they're and what they're facing. Okay. So, um, yeah, it was it was good. Because three DM is a ministry that helps pastors change their church culture into disciple making culture, which is the journey you're on already. And yes. And and so um, if folks want to learn more about there's something else I want to talk to you about, too. But if folks want to learn more about your church, where can they go? I cut out all that Instagram and all the other things because it really wasn't working. We are a smaller church. I didn't have enough people to manage that. And it just makes your church look bad when it just sits with mm. stuff that's yep. not moving. So um, they can find us on uh, Facebook and they can find us on our uh, web page which is uh, livelystonescc.org. Okay. And those are and, the two places we are. And so, and Lively Stones Christian Center in Facebook too. And and so, but I know you've got another big priority in the church and that's young people. Yes. And so, so tell, tell me if you would a little about what you're doing with young people and what you've seen happening. So um, and here here I go, you know, my 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 teachers at BMA 10 point along with you, uh, we did a discussion one morning about um, and, and, and it was three parts to it. But the part that stuck out for me was belonging mm. and um, and how, how do we get young people to feel like they belong to the church and that they are a part of that. And so um, in doing that, I. I I've been praying to God, you know, what is the niche for Lively Stones? What is the niche of what we need to do? Uh, and he, we connected, we was going to different things with the Brockton Public School System. And finally, uh, we connected with them through their homeless program that they do with uh, young people. And in doing that, we did a program that was called Teen Challenge through BMA. And we was actually to take one young lady that had never been to an aquarium um, we were able to take them to the aquarium. So that was beautiful anyway. So, um, um, and, and, and doing that and showing them that they belong, uh, and that, that became our niche and began to grow our church. So we and, began and, to get parents and, you know, their friends and, uh, and they felt a sense of belonging. Yeah. yeah. And so, so now is that for young people, oh, I'll say teenagers in that range, is that for young people in your church you started working with them or are you going out into your community? No, it was outside. They had never community. And so how did you do so that? What, so you mentioned Not the choir. What, how did you go meet kids in the community? We, um, and, and doing things with the Brock, Brockton public school system and going to some of their meetings to their diversity meetings and, um, different things like that. Um, someone said, oh, have you met such and such and such? So when when we met them, we found out that they did a program um, after school for those that were going to school that was actually homeless or misplaced or however you want to, whatever the new word yep. is for that. Um, and we decided to go. And so we went and it was so, I, I was just, I, you know, I was emotionally moved by so many misplaced children. I mean, young people, I mean, these are teenagers. Um, and so we did our little flyers and told them to come to our program. And, you know, I joined Teen Challenge before we even had any teens yet. <laughs> I was praying to God to send us some, but he sent us uh, these young people and some of them are still with us. And they never come to our church and we did not talk church from the, the time of July to August. We just took them on trips and just showed them the love of Jesus Christ. That's it. Mm. Uh, and and told them that we are here if they and then uh, these young people decided, well, this is a church. Can we come to your church? Well, yes, you can come <laughs> to my church. <laughs> And they decided to start coming to church. They started coming to church. And when they came, um, came to church, they gave their life to Christ. And, um, and so, yeah, there, there is still some, some, some things with that, with their parents, because some of the parents are Catholic. They don't want them to be, you know, so it's, it's all of that. But my whole thing is, is that we either water the seed or we planted the seed. And so however God uses that, I'm happy. And we still have, um, some of the young people still with us. Yeah. 
You know, it's, uh, you know, we're, there's so many people out there with sophisticated strategies about how do we deal with the next generation and what does that look like and what are their priorities and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not against that kind of stuff, but I, what I love in yours is it's actually just really simple. It's just go love them. Just go love them and, and show them that they belong. Yeah. yeah. And they'll, and they'll, and they'll and ask they have a seat at the table. Yeah. Instead of me trying to get you to come into my building and into my church, you just love them. And they ask to come to your building and your church. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, the other thing I see that God is beginning to do with us is, um, I I've taken, um, our prayer meeting. We no longer meet inside the church or on zoom. We're, we're in person, but we're at another venue. Uh, I'm taking our women's group. Uh, Cause I, you know, it says go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in mm -hmm. that his house may be full, but I want them to compel to come into Jesus Christ first, know who he is and then step foot into the church. If that's what they choose to do, because I found that, you know, if, if someone wants uh, to know who Jesus Christ is, you introduce them. Uh, and if they want to give their life to him, you can, you can give it out there parking lot in a car in a restaurant it doesn't have to be inside the church and so we're now also doing our women's ministry at another venue that's great and so what any anything i think that's a great story i love hearing it thank you for sharing it thank you for doing it um the but you're you're also involved in the brockton school system because the brockton school system has some real challenges and so was that your entree into this group that works with the homeless students or did you get, are you doing other um, things related to some of the Brockton challenges? Yeah, we were connected. We were connected with the, um, the Brockton public schools before all of the blew up. Uh, we have been, we've been doing this and trying to connect with them for the last two years. And what we found when we connected with one of the, um, one of the leaders there, you know, one of the administrators, um, they actually said that um, they're looking for churches to connect with the school system and the churches will act like that the schools don't want them but the school wants to connect with churches yeah you know it's they it's really do it's so funny you say that this is the third time and maybe the last two weeks i've heard uh this exact thing one was in a very elite higher education uh school where they're they're reaching out to uh, college ministry saying, we want to connect our kids to you sooner when they get here. Mm -hmm. You're hearing the same thing mm -hmm. of we would like the churches to come in and be part of what's going on here. Uh, and I heard another mm -hmm. story um, yesterday about it. it wasn't schools, but it was government reaching out and saying, how do we help you guys uh, with what you're mm -hmm. doing? And it's just right, yeah. something's happening here that is yes. counterintuitive and we think not possible. But it's mm -hmm. when you hear it that many times in this short a period of time, you're like, okay, something's going on here. Something's going on. Revival is happening. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe that early part of it, maybe that early part of it. <laughs> and so, uh, and if there is, you're a key part of it. And we're grateful to you for, uh, for who you are and for your ministry and the partnership we have. I'm really grateful to you. Yeah. Thank you for pouring into me, Charles. Thank you for the same. This program is created by Vision New England, which accelerates evangelists by helping the church make disciples, do justice, and foster unity so people want to know Jesus and New England's transformed. You can find more resources at visionnewengland.org. This program is brought to you by our friends at the Palau Association, who are dedicated to proclaiming the good news, uniting the church, and impacting cities worldwide. At Leadership Transformations, we believe that when you have the right resources, to help you slow down and experience a deep and refreshing connection to God, you can become the discerning leader you know you are created to be. Friends, Steve Machia here, and I have a free gift for your soul. It's called Pathways. Pathways is our weekly email aimed at offering you soul-nourishing content for the journey. It contains readings, prayers, spiritual practices, a link to the Discerning Leader podcast, as well as information about all of our upcoming soul care retreats, workshops, and online offerings. So head on over to leadershiptransformations.org today and sign up for this free resource. It will help you slow down and be more. God bless you, friends.